Welcome, uh, Mr. Hattin, to the forum and also to this interview. Uh, we think we are witnessing the last phase of the operation against IS in Yunnan you know, province. And this issue brought to, the que brought to our, our attention to the question of f future of Iraq and also the security structures in Iraq. And the emergence of IS made it obvious that there is a problem with the security structure in Iraq. And then we had different groups and Hashti Shaib emerged as an important security provider in Iraq. And now with the legal changes, they have, a, they have a legal status as well now. And now people are talking about the future of Iraq in political terms and also in security terms. In your assessment, how will be the future of Iraq in terms of political terms, but at the same time security terms, and the role of Hashti Shaibi here? I think the, the politics and the security uh, in Iraq, they interact significantly and they overlap. The reason why there is the Hashd al-Shaabi organization, militia organization, is because Iraq uh, has had to face a crisis of governance and security, not only after ISIS, but even before ISIS. Iraq has had a militia problem since 2003, where the state collapsed, these armed groups, these militias filled the vacuum. The defining feature of Iraq's, I'd say, past 10 to 15 years is that where the state and its institutions become stronger, where the state is able to provide basic services and security by way of a respected uh, national army, uh, these armed groups, these militias become weaker. So the answer to your question, I would say, is it all depends on whether Iraq's polit political class uh, are able to uh, establish some kind of framework for the future that makes the institutions in a position or that rebuilds institutions so that they're able to provide services and security. If they are unable, the Hashid will continue to dominate the space. But, but there isn't one single Hashid. This is the problem. The Hashid... Yeah, in that regard, there are different groups within Hashid, but at the same time, as you refer, there are also talks going on among different political groups to form a unity in terms of addressing the questions that you raised. How do you see the likelihood of coming a, having a common ground Different among different political groups, and what will the reflections of this on the security structure and also status of Hashd? I think after ISIS, we will see a potentially, in my opinion, a radical transformation of the political map uh, in the country. And that is because of the popular support the Hashd now has. Uh, there, there will be elections coming up in the next year or two. At these elections, we'll see the more prominent militia groups within Hashd acquire greater political. Uh, uh, status, legitimacy, and this has implications for the future of the Iraqi state, the political and security environment. There isn't one single Hashid. Uh, the organization has yet to establish its own uh, identity, uh, practically speaking. The Hashid provides a mandate for militias to continue after ISIS is defeat defeated. It provides a political and legal mandate at the same time. The future of the security environment depends on the competition taking place within the Hashid. Within the Hashid, you have two, roughly speaking, categories. The groups which have been acting autonomously from the Iraqi state for the past decade, which have stronger relationships, ties to Iran, which are backed by, they're provided with money and arms by Iran, but also the militia groups that have stronger relations with the Iraqi state, that, are, uh, that see their future being part of the Iraqi state, which do not reject uh, the possibility of an Iraqi state uh, whereas the other militias, the, particularly the Iran-aligned militias, their ascendancy, their superiority depends on having uh, a weak state, unless, of course, they become part of this state. So the, these, these pieces are, are still moving. There's a lot taking place, I think, that will take place between now and the next uh, six months to a year. Lastly, uh, in, in, your, in, in these different groups uh, within Hasht, how likely, as you referred, how likely to incorporate all of these groups, maybe if they are intended, if they are really willing to take part in the secret structure of the future of Iraqi state? Or shall we also definitely ex exclude some of these actors away from the uh, military I think scene? W when you speak to these actors, they will tell you that they are the state. They work with the Iraqi military. They, some of the militia heads have been ministers before in the past. They will tell you they take part in elections. And they'll tell you they are no different to the state. They are not uh, functioning outside of the system. Uh, and that is a narrative which is starting to be accepted by different sections uh, of the Iraqi population. However, uh, these militias are not 
uh, very good or effective at administering territory. They are not state builders per se. They, established, they were established from or emerged from the chaos and destruction after 2003. That means at some point these militias will fail to provide security and services. And as happened before in Iraq over the past decade, when that happens, their popular bases will diminish. They will lose the support of the Iraqi population. But for that to make a difference to the future of the Iraqi state, to have more viable institutions, the state has to be ready to take their place. Otherwise, the population will continue to turn to these armed groups for, su for support, for services, uh, for security. And of course, coming back to my earlier point, it depends on how this competition evolves between the Iran-aligned factions, but also the Iraqi state-aligned, Iraqi nationalistic-aligned uh, factions within the Hashid. Dr. Ratan, thank you very much for your comments. Pleasure. Thank you.